let me start with telling you guys how I end up meeting the artist. Frank is a six-time international bestseller. He's a real estate artist. And when I heard that for the first time, I was like, what does he mean by that? Because I'm not into the real estate business. Uh, Frank is an actor. He's a philanthropist, which he's called philanthropist. Capitalist. Capitalist. Yeah. Yeah. And me and Gustavo, we started uh, Volunteer Emergency Relief. And Gustavo brought to my attention, Freddie, you got to study this guy. You know, what he does for a living, how he runs, you know, his nonprofit organization. And that's how I ended up meeting Frank. Sent him over an email and he gave me 20 minutes of his time. And there we started a good friendship, right? Yeah. Uh, you know, he came over to the Paige for a good cause. We had an amazing night. And then I say, Frank, I would love to see your final masterpiece. And now that I'm here, I understand why it's called the final masterpiece. I'm so glad that I'm thrilled to be here. Thank you. Thank well, you for the, the reason we build the big houses like here at 3492 uh, South Ocean and South Palm Beach, so we can build a lot of little houses over in Haiti. You know, you have to, p p human beings need purpose. They need, to, they need to be appreciated and they need purpose. And for me, you know, I had been doing this so long, I've been doing this 30 years, but about 15 years ago, I was at a low point in my life. I was making a lot of money and selling a lot of these beautiful houses, creating them a beautiful, it, it, it is, it's a canvas on a sun-drenched, you know, ocean. It's, it's three-dimensional art. And I love it. It's a gift that God gave me. But I was empty, you know, and I realized I wasn't pursuing my spiritual highest calling. My professional highest calling was a gift from God, and I was, I was being a responsible steward for that but not, not spiritually. And so I'm a very simple person, have a 1.8 grade point average out of high school, and I realized I should be providing housing to the world's most desperately poor and homeless, as well as the world's most wealthy, because this is a gift God's given me and I'm, I'm being a responsible steward with it. But what about the poorest of the poor? And so we started building self-sufficient villages in Haiti 15 years ago. We've built 26 of them. I'm in my 27th and 28th right now. Uh, where I am a firm believer that charity exacerbates poverty. Charity does not solve poverty. Charity makes poverty worse. It's free enterprise and capitalism that's the solution to poverty. And that's why our villages, uh, uh, Frederico, in Haiti are self-sufficient. Yes, Sam. Do or die. All the times I would buy my tub. Every time I would turn it. That's why uh, I want to be next to this guy. I want to learn from him. If he just tell me the mistakes that he did, it's going to save us a lot of time, money, you know, so. Well, that's part of being a responsible steward is, is in the Gospel of Luke, you know, chapter 12, verse 48. It speaks about being <clears throat> to whom much is entrusted, much is expected. And if you're into the Bible, that's a, you know, it's a literal reading. If you're not into the Bible, it's really basically being a responsible steward for the blessings God's given you. And, and so we've done that with our financial and fiscal approach to what we do in Haiti. But the other part is sharing knowledge. And yes, there's a lot of mistakes we've made. And I could tell the aura radiating from Frederico and Gustavo was pure. It was of the Holy Spirit. And even if I didn't feel that, I'll still share with you what I know. But there's an anointing on certain people that I feel I, I can sense. And you have it. You definitely have it. And if I can help in any small way um, with what you're going to be doing over there, what you do in the Bahamas, he's a man of action. And, and there, the statement that you like that I, I came up with after the Haiti earthquake, compassion without action is a waste of emotion. If you have compassion, Wonderful. That's, that is an emotion. But if you take no action on it, isn't it wasted? You're better off going to the movie, watching some funny movie and laughing, which is an emotion. And, and at least you've been able to laugh. You're sitting there taking advantage of them. But in compassionate situations where you're, it's incumbent upon you to take action and you don't, even if you text $10 to the Red Cross, at least you took some action. Exactly. I, I just, I'm, I, that's what impressed me about, about Frederico and Gustavo is, I mean, and, and again, I think it's in um, John, faith without works is dead. It's the same thing. You know, like these guys have faith and they're, they're, they're acting on that and that excites me. Talkers and dreamers and Frank and I get a cup of coffee and share my dreams with me. The answer is always no. I don't want to really, I mean, dreams are a dime a dozen. 
I want to see what kind of actions you're taking on your dreams. Yes, it, it's uh, you saying that uh, me and Gustavo we were just talking, and we had a guy that's keeping asking us, I want to go to the Bahamas, I want to go. Then we reach out to him today, say, hey, we're going to the Bahamas. How? Where am I sleeping? What am I going to eat there? So, and I say, you're not going to the Bahamas. <laughs> right, 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 right. <laughs> because if you want to go, you just you gotta jump go. on an opportunity like we did. Right. You know, we, we bought a one-way ticket. The guy told us, don't buy the, your ticket back. We don't you know don't when know we're going right. to, how we're going to get there. We had no idea, but it's acting. Uh, it should not be saying that, but first you act, then you think. Because if you start thinking, processing, you're not right. going to do anything. Tell me about the highlight of this house. Wow, I mean, it's, so hard. Many, right? it's hard to get in five minutes, but really when you first walk in the front door, I mean, you're looking at the world's only jelly sphere. That is the only jelly sphere in a, in a residential setting in the entire world. So you have a sphere in a square. You see that as you walk in the front door and, and in the background, you see the disappearing edge pool. You see the beautiful ocean through 12 foot tall sliding glass doors that pocket all the way to the end. So there's only one column in this entire first floor. So on a nice day, these doors open all the way up, all the way, and you've got from your dining room, you've got that full ocean view. You've got a 220 bottle climate controlled wine room just to the other side of the jelly spheres, jellyfish. So if they get thirsty, they can grab their <laughs> bottles of wine. They can drink their wine. You've got a, a fireplace in the, in the living room. Beyond the living room, the kitchen, we all were just drooling over. I mean, everybody oh, the going kitchen, to I was like. Isn't that beautiful? Oh my gosh. So the kitchen has its, the only, again, lava countertops, 11,000 year old lava from France, comes out of the ground 11,000 years ago, and now it's in the kitchen at 3492 South Ocean. Just beyond that is the family room where the doors don't just pocket into the side here, they pocket into the wall. So if you're sitting there watching your favorite television show, you, in the background is the ocean. Going up the stairs, the master bedroom was 1,270 square feet. So it's the biggest room in the house. It's got uh, carpet from Holland. It's 100% wool. The backing of the carpet is tree sap. So there's no, no chemicals in the carpet whatsoever. From the master bedroom, when you lift your head off that pillow, matter of fact, you don't have to lift, lift your head off the pillow. Looking out that, that door, that, those doors that slide into the wall, if you're out there and you're a buyer, I'll sell you the house for a million dollars, but the master bedroom is $14 million <laughs> because that view is worth every penny. It is, it is more guest bedrooms upstairs. Every guest bedroom has a view of the ocean, not only from the bedroom, but from the shower. Uh, and then you go all the way up to the third floor where you've got a rooftop lounge that's 44 feet above sea level. And it feels like you're sitting on the deck of a boat. It's, it's it almost, is. It does. It's, you know, it's just like the water. I mean, you don't even see land. Yeah. It's just like, you know, you know it's amazing. Uh, his purpose is humongous. And you wrote a book about that, right? I wrote a book called The Tap, which the is tap. basically an expansion of Luke 1248, to whom much is entrusted, much is expected. And on the cover of that book, but it's really the image of, from the Sistine Chapel when Michelangelo painted the finger of God touching the finger of Adam. So we remove the finger of, of, of Adam, we remove Adam completely, and it's really God coming down and tapping you on the shoulder. So how many times have you been tapped on the shoulder? These guys were tapped with, with the Bahamas, with their VER, and they've acted on those tap moments. So it's about feeling life's great tap moments, and then more importantly, learning how to act on them. And that's, you know, passion with a purpose. You can have passion and you can have purpose, but those two together, man, that's why you see this artistry here, why you see what you've done in the Bahamas, and what we continue to do in, in, in Haiti. Because I want to be a responsible steward for God's blessings. I want to be at that gate, when Peter says, looks at my, my life's resume, yeah, Frank, you messed up a few times over here, but you've been a good steward. Awesome, thank you. Thank you for having me over. You're welcome. God bless. Okay. Thank you. Now I know what I'm fighting for.